diaper, 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 diaper. It is Super Nanny Saturday, and this week the wheel landed on the Van Acker family. So grab your beverages and let's dive in. No, 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 blanket. Emma is a very spirited little girl. You don't? No! Dylan loves to scream. Whining is one of my least favorite traits of young children. I think, you know how everyone has their own form of nails scratching on a chalkboard? That is my, mine. As a parent, as a teacher, when you hear that voice where it draws out. Oh, oh gosh, this is gonna be a hard one. I'm gonna need an espresso or something to get through this. Potty training doesn't exist for Dylan. If you try to make him use it, his fit almost gets into convulsions. <laughs> He's just terrified of it. It's okay. He's starting to run and hide from us when he has to go to the restroom. Are you going poop? No, no. Well, what are you doing then? No way! He will hold his pee or poop eight hours. Oh, my it's only the submission reel and we're jumping right into the second issue that we'll be talking about today, which is potty training. This little boy is three years old and he is refusing to use the potty. He's demanding the diaper. So we're gonna talk about whining. We're gonna talk about potty training. What else do we have, Super Nanny? What else do we have? I want dinner. You want dinner now? The he runs the dinner and when to eat, what to eat. All right, let's make some dinosaur chickens. He doesn't want to eat real food. <laughs> It's always gonna be something sugary or a snack. We took him to the doctor and found out that he's anemic due to his diet. You're not having a fruit roll. We now have a third issue on top of whining, on top of potty training, we now have picky eating. And I must say these are not uncommon. For parents of younger children ages 18 months to about age four and beyond, if their child is neurodivergent, you're going to come across these challenges. Spin the wheel, you're going to land on at least one of them as you raise children. Before we move on to observation day, I do wanna go back and look at the times where mom and dad actually made their situation worse. Emma, who's six? Mom, I don't wanna get rid of it today. First one, instead of responding to this type of wine, you look at your six-year-old and you go, oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't understand you. Try again. Let's go try to use the potty. Yeah! Right here, mom says, let's try to use the potty. As if the child is going to go, why, yes, that sounds like a lovely idea, mom. No, instead, you say in five minutes, we are going to sit on the potty. Are you going poop? No, no. Well, what are you doing then? No way. Don't ask questions to children that put them in a position to lie because he knows that he's not supposed to do that. So if mommy asks him, are you pooping? He now has to think, well, do I lie? Do I say I, 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 I didn't poop? You're not having a fruit roll. No, yeah. She says, you're not gonna have that right now. First of all, why did the child have access to it? He was obviously able to come all the way outside with it. You're making it very available. And then secondly, you're pushing against your child. Instead, you go, wow, you found fruit roll-ups. Those are so delicious. I really love that flavor. You know what? That's gonna taste so good when we go inside after we're done playing outside. Oh, my wiener. Does it hurt? Yeah. He won't put big boy underwear on. Use natural consequences to your advantage. So look at your child and go, oh yeah, ow, it does hurt. You know why? Because when you pee and it, it kind of gets on your skin and it stays there, it starts to not feel so good. And then when you poop, it sometimes it burns and that's why I put that cream on. And when you go in a potty, it goes straight into the potty and it doesn't really touch your skin for very long and it doesn't hurt. And then just leave it like that. You don't have to say, and that's why you need to go in the potty. Just give information that makes them go, huh? oh, well, I don't like this feeling, so maybe I shouldn't do it. And then it becomes their decision, and when they make the decision, they're more likely to stick with it. Yeah. It's to the point where we've let the kids take over the house, and we need someone to help us. You need to have a bite. Ah! 
it doesn't work, we don't really know where to go next. Yeah! Ah, ah! No, no! Super Nanny, please get here as soon as you can. Well, I know you guys are feeling overwhelmed, but hang on in there because I'm going to be with you soon. Super Nanny is on her way. Let's dive into Observation Day. Why don't you want to eat? Please, I got you watermelon. <laughs> What's wrong? Want me to cut it? <clears throat> I could cut it no! for you. You don't want it cut? I was seeing how much he knows exactly what buttons to push. When you look at Dylan, you can clearly see that he has control. Oh. Eat it, you gotta bite it. Everyone is just staring at him and talking to him and telling him what to do. Something I have adopted as a parent myself is putting a lot less pressure on your children to eat. You just put it down in front of them and then just like ignore them. They have to stay sitting. You have a rule of we stay sitting at the table or wherever your children are, but you're not staring at them while they're doing and then let them kind of explore. And sometimes they get so bored at the table or you're distracting them and talking about different things at the table that they just start eating. I even, and I know this isn't recommended, but it's something that's worked for me and my family, so I will share it, is I let my children eat in front of the screen. They don't have any problems where they overeat. It actually encourages them to eat a little bit more. So I put down a little tray of lots of different foods, things that they like, things that they are okay with, and then something new. And then they just kind of eat while they're watching TV or whatever it is. I just feel like this is a lot of pressure. It's almost like the Dylan show and he knows it's going to be his show and he gets all of this attention and he gets to see what am I gonna do with it as if he's like a little comedian. Are you done? <laughs> Dylan's got so much control. Within 10 minutes, he's down from the table and he's in the pantry where he's given treats and sweety things to eat. We actually just found out he's anemic because of his diet. And so he's got an iron deficiency, which could cause him to be tired and gets the dark circles under his eyes. Mm -hmm. This is a hard one because some children will require more intervention than others in different areas. It could be picky eating. It could be their sleeping patterns. It could be potty training. But if you're continuing to do something and it's not working, try to look at the patterns, write it down, analyze the data. You are your child's best advocate. And then if you can't do it yourself and perhaps you can afford it or there's some kind of government assistance to seek out professionals who are even better in this area. Now I must praise the family. They did call Super Nanny. So let's see what she's going to implement. Stop, D. I was watching Emma try and complete her homework whilst Dylan was kicking off. And mom did nothing about it. Stop. No. no! The technique of ignoring is tricky territory because what a child will do is they will continue to amp up the behavior until you respond. And then what you've taught your child is it's not just a whine that gets mommy's attention. It's not just kicking on the ground. It's whipping around a towel. Maybe it's peeing in public. Maybe it's pushing the parents, maybe it's knocking things over. They will just continue to level up until you respond. So if you're going to ignore, if, and it's not my recommendation on discipline strategies, but if you are going to ignore, remember that you, you ignoring is going all the way through because if you then stop ignoring when they reach a certain level, then you've just taught them to go to that level. I tend to let things go and go and go to the point where I get frustrated. I just pick them up and put them in their room, shut their door so I don't have to deal with it. You can sit in here until you can come out and be nice. If he's naughty, mum places him into his bedroom, which is the same place that he plays with his trains. So it's more a case of getting him out of mum's hair. I don't understand why mom didn't just have him play trains from the beginning. Why not have a schedule where when sissy does homework, that's when you play trains? And it could be super special that the train table only comes out when sissy is doing homework so that you don't get interrupted and you can avoid all of this. And then bonus, bonus, is you have a built-in consequence. 
Because if your child loves trains and then they continue to interrupt, you do the warning and then you take away the trains. But you're setting them up for success, so you're probably not even gonna have to do the consequence because they're so excited about the train table. Have a schedule. Have a schedule. The kid is not gonna sit here at the table like this. Let me watch my sister do homework and just sit here like an adult. He's three. Why don't we try going pee pee in the no, pond? And then it was like a broken record. Diaper, 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 diaper. Diaper. Come on. Mommy, diaper. Come on. Diaper. Let's go. So what is it you're doing now? Diaper. Give him a diaper. Diaper. This is like a master class on what not to do with a toddler or a preschooler. And I really feel like people need to hear this. You do not need to fight every battle with your child all at once. There are so many skills over the years that you're gonna work on. Sharing, taking turns, conflict resolution, regulating emotions, potty training, eating healthy foods, and you know which one of those skills that your child struggles with. So if you choose too many of those things at once, you are not going to be successful. I'll give you a personal example. My daughter was potty trained within days when I tried. I used the same exact technique with my son when he became that age, and guess what? It didn't work. And it wasn't because of me, it was because he was a different child. So I looked at that situation, I said, you know what? This is not a battle that I'm willing to fight right now. There are other skills that we are working on, so I'm gonna table this. So whenever he needed to go to the bathroom, I gave him a pull-up and there was no fight. The worst thing that you can do is say you're not going to give the pull-up and then give the pull-up. That's very confusing. And then guess what? <laughs> One day he was potty trained. It happened. He's not an 18 year old walking around with a pull up. <laughs> Dylan, don't scream at the table. We're not going to get up until you're finished eating your dinner. Pete? <laughs> Dylan. Dylan, stop that. Turn around, please. Turn around. Stop that screaming right now. Any more of this nonsense at the table, and you'll be going straight into timeout. <laughs> Dylan started to cry, he started to whine. Put Dylan into timeout myself. It is officially teaching day and the first thing that Joe Frost wants to work on is the picky eating. I completely agree with this. If you're gonna pick a battle to fight, right now Dylan is anemic. This is something that is affecting his health. So let's put some effort here. So they go to the grocery store, they buy a variety of foods, they make a well-balanced meal, but of course Dylan won't eat it. He is told that he is not able to leave the table until he finishes his dinner. Then of course, he starts exhibiting those behaviors that used to work, screaming, making noises, making a whole fuss. So Joe Frost comes over and tells him that if he doesn't stop, she gives him the warning, he's going to go to timeout. Of course he doesn't stop, so now he's in timeout. Again, this isn't something that I would use timeout for. I don't use timeout when children are being removed from an activity that they don't wanna be in anyway. He doesn't wanna be sitting at the table and now you're removing him from the table. So this wouldn't be the consequence I would choose. What do you think about this situation so far? You need to turn around and eat. <laughs> As soon as you finish eating, you can get down, but you need to eat what I asked you to eat. What I want you to do is tell him that he needs to have four pieces of chicken and two peas. Sit down and eat your chicken. And you need to sit down and eat your chicken. Admittedly, it was only two mouthfuls, but it's better than nothing. He didn't even have the four pieces of chicken and the two peas that she said was a reasonable expectation. And then, she labels it a breakthrough because he had two mouthfuls and it took over an hour for him to have those two mouthfuls. We have this huge negative experience around food. <sighs> what are your thoughts? Because right now I'm just having a lot of negative thoughts around this. So I'm probably going to zoom through the rest of the episode so we can get through to the update. Look out for the Phoenix, okay? Bye bye Jojo. Dylan, give me a high five. Okay, bye-bye, Dylan. The future is looking pretty good for the Van Ackers. Keep in touch, okay? 
For the rest of the episode, Joe Frost does work on potty training with Dylan and the method that she appears to use is a lot of distraction. So he has to sit on the potty. He's not to wear any diapers. So they get rid of all the diapers. He's only allowed to use underwear. And when he's sitting on the potty, dad tells him stories and talks to him and distracts him enough so that he is able to relax and let it go. And then as he gets better, they start pulling away that storytelling and the big you know, distraction so that he's able to do it successfully on his own. He does make a lot of progress. So it seems like a battle that um, might be worth continuing to fight because he is making progress as opposed to the food. We don't really see much about that. If you want to see the full episode, the link is in the description, but let's get to the update on where the Van Acker family is now. This was filmed in February of 2010. Post episode, Jessica and Kevin divorced, but the reason behind their divorce has yet to be confirmed. And Kevin remarried to a woman named Tracy, and she also has children from another marriage. Dylan was presumably diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome, and that's likely because of his farting noise when he met Joe and how he repeats the same word over and over again. Okay, it does say presumably, so we don't really know, but that was um, interesting to note as a data point when we were watching. Let's see if we have any pictures. This is Jessica's Instagram. The oven is preheated. Like, oh, or the oven, hold on. <laughs> It's a private Instagram, but we do have her main picture there. We don't have anything from dad, but we do have Emma's Instagram, which is the daughter who's, I guess, what would she be, like 16 now, if I did the math correctly? So there's Emma. We didn't really get to know Emma much on the episode. There was so much focus on Dylan. And then this is Dylan's Instagram. Let's see how he's doing. Okay, we, we just have a basic graphic for him. It's not of him. I don't know what that is. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.